All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, we're covering the topic of pruning fig trees in the springtime. And there's definitely a little bit of different things to focus on if you were to prune, let's say, in the fall or in the wintertime. There's definitely a little bit of a difference now that we are in the spring. And I would highly recommend you guys go back. Actually, we did a pruning video of container fig trees and in-ground fig trees, two different videos in the fall and we talked a lot about the rules and what we're really trying to achieve at those times of the year and what pruning really is all about for fig trees. And it really just comes down to, if we wanna boil it down to sunlight, because we're trying to maximize the amount of sunlight that our trees receive on every point of our fig trees. Because if we can maximize that sunlight, we can have a more productive tree, definitely an earlier to ripen fruits and definitely even higher quality fruits. So all of that should be our focus. We should really be aiming for maximizing the sunlight. And one of the things that I highly recommend, and we'll do a different video actually on this, is actually the, the, the process of staking. Because believe it or not, I would rather stake my fig tree than prune it in most situations. Now, some of you guys actually may have a really dense fig tree. And every single year I get this question in the fall, well, Ross, why is my tree not fruiting? It has, it's such a big and beautiful tree and it grows so well, but it doesn't fruit. Why is that? Well, it's all about that sunlight. It's probably too dense in the center of your tree. Your canopy is too many branches, too close together, and you're not getting the sunlight that you need. Even this spot here on the southwest corner of my house probably gets the most heat and the most sunlight, and it's probably the best spot in my yard for a fig tree. But even so, with this good spot, or even a worse spot, I want to maximize the amount of light that this tree is receiving. And the only way to do that is with proper pruning and, of course, staking. Now, I would rather stake a branch to get it in the direction that I want it. If I have a branch that's in the wrong position because it's, let's say, crisscrossing or let's say it's crowding another branch or another scaffold, then I wanna make sure I can stake it away rather than having to prune it out. Because the more pruning that we do in the wintertime, that changes up the hormones in our trees, guys, and sets them up in a way that only encourages growth and not fruiting. So we don't wanna be pruning a lot either. Now, one of the questions I get every spring is, Ross, you know, is it too late to prune my fig tree? My tree is just leafed out, it's starting to grow. Well, in actuality, it's not really too late we even do pruning in the summertime, and that's called pinching. Go check out some of the videos I've done on that. And I would also highly recommend if you guys, at this point, you're enjoying the content I've been creating, hit that subscribe button for me, hit that like button for me. It really helps out the YouTube algorithm to spread this awesome information I'm trying to share about fig trees. And check out our blog, figboss.com. It is just taken off. If you saw the analytics, you'd lose your mind people are always concerned with, is it too late to prune? And the answer is no, but I would highly recommend that you keep pruning limited once your tree has leafed out because you wanna to try to preserve all these apical buds. You wanna to try to preserve all this new growth because wherever this new growth forms, it's typically on the apical and lateral buds, the higher buds on the tree. Every single point on our tree potentially is gonna form a lot of main crop and even probably some brevas as well. And if we're gonna remove a lot of that, those apical and lateral buds that have the right hormonal balance within them, that's gonna create an issue with getting our trees to fruit. That there are different buds on the fig tree. And so you have the topmost bud, that is the apical bud. Buds below it are the lateral buds. And they typically, again, they have more energy and they have the right hormonal component within them. So if we're pruning them out, we're actually making it more difficult for our fig tree to fruit. And those buds, a lot of time, a lot of the time are gonna be leafing out in the spring. And if we remove a lot of those buds, we're actually getting later to ripen fruits, we're getting a lower fruit quality, and we're getting less fruits to begin with. So I would recommend trying not to prune um, but if you need to prune because your tree doesn't have the right shape and it isn't getting enough light into the center of it and things are too crowded, then you have to do what you gotta do. And so there's always a pro and con to everything. There's always nuance in life, right? However, in general, a rule of thumb for me is to reduce pruning to the absolute minimum. And the way to do that is actually to use staking, to stake the branches away from each other 
that's the best of both worlds because you're getting the open center that you want and you're getting the you're preserving these buds that are so important for fruit set and production and earlier ripening fruits and higher quality fruits i will say this as well before we do any further talk i would highly recommend these two tools by the way these are in my opinion i've tried every single tool in the business these are the highest quality tools and they're also the best tools for any pruning job this is the felco 8 it's really good for lower caliper things lower caliper branches excuse me and then this is the silky pocket boy i really like these smaller um, saws that allow you to really get in there and uh, they're so ergonomic. It's so easy to actually cut with them. And I'll put the link to these in the description actually, by the way, if you guys are interested. Uh, let's get back to some of the other objectives. Now we talked about light, maximizing light. The other objective actually in the spring that separates, I think this time of the year from other times of the year is actually dead wood. We wanna remove all the dead wood. And I think what I'm noticing here, especially those of us in colder climates, so those of us in like a zone 8A or below, zone 7s, zone 6s, we end up getting a lot of these entry points here, these little weird spots on the bark. And uh, these entry points, for whatever reason, I think it's because of the, the cold and the freeze-thaw cycles that occur. It's just unusual how these entry points form. Figs, just for whatever reason, they get these, these spots here. And as a result, a lot of the growth above it tends to die back where those entry points are. And inevitably, if this gets a little bit too wide, maybe we have a bad winter, we end up having something like this that occurs where the entire branch, I have to cut it back to a much lower point. And you can see actually, this is the remnants where a lot of that damage had shown up on this particular branch. But you cut it back as a form of rejuvenation pruning and these two branches now are coming up in its place and will eventually take over the space that that was in and attain that, that photosynthesis, that sunlight that the tree wants. So it's not necessarily a terrible thing, but it's a good way to regulate the size, right? Everyone wants a smaller fig tree. You don't want something too big. Everyone's always concerned with, oh, it's just too big. How do I deal with that? Well, take out some of these lower branches from the bottom, remove every one of those or a few of those, I should say, maybe one or two, maybe three, every year, every other year. And that kind of recycles the tree, allows it to become more healthier, allows it to uh, be more attainable of a size. And you just, in general, see much more success that way, especially with something like fig mosaic virus. And a lot of growers, I will argue, will tell you that fig mosaic virus never really, um, or it, it can be just outgrown. The fig tree will outgrow it, but in some situations, if the, the, the case of fig mosaic virus is severe enough, your tree may never outgrow it, and it will always deal with it throughout the remainder of its life. And one of the best ways to actually get rid of it is just do this pruning that I just mentioned. Prune out some of this lower growth, some of the thicker branches here, like the scaffolds or branches from the trunk, um, or one of the trunks, excuse me, from the soil that's going to help rejuvenate your tree. It's going to just respond by growing a lot, right? As I said, if we remove a lot of growth in the winter time, especially these apical and lateral buds, the response of our fig trees is just to grow and grow and grow. But that sometimes can be a good thing. And other times we want our trees to fruit as much as possible. We already have a healthy tree. It's already beautiful and the right size. We're already getting the right sunlight penetration that we want. Um, so that's the main concern, I think, right there, is taking out some of that dead wood. I really noticed that over the years, as the trees are starting to get older, they have these entry points and these weak points. And I think instead of just letting them grow and letting them do their thing, it's best to kind of take them out. This branch here, this scaffold in particular, is showing some of that damage. And I imagine, even though there is very limited dead wood on this tree or on this section of the tree this year, there is still some of that dead wood. And I would not be surprised if maybe this time next year, this whole branch is dead. And so maybe it makes sense to actually take this out, allow something from a lower point that is healthy to take its place. Um, and that way we don't have to deal with this in the future. It's just something to think about. Maybe you guys have similar spots. Every tree is different and every variety is different. I have noticed this on other trees as well, 
one of my Azores darks over here actually, and I've already taken steps to, to prune this. But I think taking out all that dead wood is really critical. So you can see right here, I took out the dead wood where that was, and then here's all the new growth here that's kind of taken its, its place. But anywhere you see these weak points here, like this right here, it's just a sign that maybe at some point in the future, your tree could actually take some significant damage. Um, as you can see up here on this Ronde Bardot, we do have a little bit of dead wood. And so we just wanna take whatever that is, take that out and um, move on with our season. So hit that subscribe button guys, check out the blog, figboss.com. See you for the next one, take care.